Triptych Algebra. Today we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. We're going to start with some, radi some simple radical expressions, define radical expressions, and then get into more complicated radical expressions with variables. First and foremost, let's talk about a few of these with just numbers in them. The square root of 25 we all know is 5. The square root of 25 is 5 because 5 squared equals 25. In the same way, if we're looking for the cube root of 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. And the reasoning for that is because 2 to the third power equals 8. In my third example here, the fourth root of 81, the fourth root of 81 is 3. And that's because 3 to the fourth power is 81. Though you may feel more comfortable with square roots, these other radicals are not much more complicated. As you'll see in this definition over here, all radicals have an index. The index is telling you what exponent you're working with. The one thing that you may not know is that the square root does have an index, even though we don't write it. It's an index of two. Often as we move to more complicated algebraic expressions, it'll be useful to write the index of two to help yourself through the problem. Let's now talk about applying radicals to negative numbers. In this first example here, I have the cube root or the index of three radical of negative 27. This answer is negative three. And that is because if we take negative three and we raise it to the third power, we do get negative 27. Importantly to show you here, I'll expand this, negative three times negative three times negative three. Importantly, remember that the properties of multiplying with negatives, as you multiply two negatives numbered together, they become positive. In this case, since we have an odd number of negatives, we do end up with negative 27. Now for the second one, the square root of negative 16, you might be thinking, well, if we follow the same process, maybe this is negative four, but negative four does not work because negative four times negative four would be a positive 16. In fact, there's no way to multiply a real number by itself to get negative 16. We would say it's not real, it uh, doesn't exist in the real number system, uh, though as you might see later on, there are complex solutions to this problem. In these cases, first I'm going to take the square root of x to the 6th and the cube root of y to the 12th. Finally, I'm going to end with this more complicated expression where I'm introducing variables and numbers or coefficients. The square root of x to the 6th. Again, what I'm trying to answer is, what gets squared to give me x to the 6th? In this case, the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third. My justification for that is that if I square x to the third, if you remember your rules of exponents, if you raise an exponential expression to another exponent, we multiply those exponents together. So the x cubed squared is x to the sixth. That verifies this as the answer. The second example right here, the cube root of y to the 12th, the cube root of y to the 12th is actually y to the 4th. And that's because if we take y to the 4th and we raise it to the third power, again, multiplying the exponents together, we get y to the 12th. Before we move forward, I want to clarify something really quick. I refer to expressions that look like this as exponential notation. We actually could say, if we're using correct terminology, this is an exponential notation of this expanded form right here, where our exponent is signifying repeated multiplication. But actually in mathematics, an exponential expression is something that looks like this, where we have a base of a constant and our variable is the exponent. This has no real implication on the math we're talking about, but just vocabulary wise, I want to make it clear. These are actually, we'd call these expressions in exponential notation or expressions with exponents. An exponential expression would actually be something that looks like this that we'll cover in a later video. So let's develop a formula for applying radicals to algebraic expressions. Well, in this case, we know that radicals are the undoing of exponents. So all we need to figure out what exponents are doing and do the opposite of that. In this case, when we cubes an algebraic expression, we end up multiplying the exponents together. 
Therefore, what the actual way of taking the, applying the radicals in each of these cases is we take these exponents and we're dividing them by the, the index. Again, remember the square root has an index of two. So if I take x to the six, take the six and divide it by two, I end up with three. And in this case, the 12 divided by three is the four. So generally speaking, if I'm taking the nth root of an exponential expression, the way that I can do that is I take the exponent here and I simply divide it by the index. This third example now contains both the problems we've talked about. It has a number or a coefficient and a variable part. In this case, we have the square root of 16z to the eighth. When we take the square root, we will get four z to the fourth. Again, I'll tell you how I did that, but, def but defend it right now. If I take four z to the fourth and I square that expression, what we know is that for exponents, I can apply this exponent to both of these factors inside this expression. So I'll square the four and square the z to the fourth. When I square the four, I get my 16 that I need. When I add the exponent or apply the exponent of two to this z to the fourth, I'm going to multiply those exponents together as I previously described, giving me 16 z to the eighth. This actually gives rise to the last important property when simplifying radical expressions. When I'm simplifying a radical expression that's made up of multiple factors of different types, I actually can apply the square root to each factor separately. Importantly, when I tack this right here, I actually can separate the square root to both of these factors, apply the square root separately, and get my ex simplified expression. This is called the product rule. If we have taking the radical of an expression that has multiple factors, we can actually take, we can split the radical over those factors. This will be very helpful when, when attacking more complicated algebraic expressions. For example, right here, we're taking the third root of 64 x to the ninth and y to the 15th. I don't have to think about this all as one expression. I can attack these individually. I can split this radical up and write it. I'll write this, but you don't actually have to do this. This is what's mathematically happening though. Again, I'm just visually showing you that instead of attacking this all at one time, I'm attacking each factor separately. Um, the cube root of 64 is four. The cube root of x to the ninth, I'm gonna take that nine, divide it by the three to get x to the third. And finally, the cube root of y to the 15th, the 15 divided by the three is y to the fifth. One interesting thing about simplifying radical expressions is that the variables end up being pretty easy because all you need to do with a variable expression is to divide the exponent by the index here in each of these cases. It, in this case, it might be more difficult, like how did you know that the cube root of 64 was four? One way, obviously, is with a calculator just taking different numbers to the third power until you realize that four to the third power is 64. But let me show you a really cool trick that involves prime factor factorization. In this video, I won't talk about how to do prime factorization. There's lots of other resources uh, for that. But in this case, we know that 64, the prime factorization of 64 is two to the sixth power. If you know how to prime factor numbers, you can actually make these problems easier than they were previously. What I'm going to do is instead of writing 64, I'm gonna replace it or substitute two to the sixth power. Then I have x to the ninth and y to the 15th. Here comes the really cool thing. If I write the prime factorization of 64, I now can treat this factor in exactly the same way that I treat these factors. This is a, an exponential expression just like these. Now what I'm going to do is divide each of these exponents by the index of three to get two squared, six divided by three is two. The nine divided by three is before is a three and the 15 divided by three is a five right here. The only other thing that I would do is I would probably evaluate two squared to get four x to the third, y to the fifth as I had previously. 
All right, let's now tackle the last type of problem that we need to understand how to simplify. One thing that you might have been asking yourself so far, well, what happens if I can't divide those exponents nicely by that index? In this case right here, for instance, the five won't divide nicely by the four, and the 10 also does not divide nicely by the four. Here's what I'm going to do. First and foremost, what I'm going to do is actually do the same move I just did with 64 with 32. I'm gonna write 32 in its prime factored form. Now, what we're expected to do is to apply this radical, this fourth root, to as much as that we can. What that means is, I, for each of these factors, I'm gonna separate them into a part that I can apply the fourth root to, and then what I would call the remainder or the leftover for that factor. Let me show you what that looks like. For two to the fifth, I'm gonna write that as two to the fourth times two or two to the one power. I'm gonna do the same thing with the x to the fifth. I'm gonna write that as an x to the fourth times an x. For the y to the 10th, I'm gonna write that as a y to the eighth times a y squared. For each of these factors, for the twos, for the x's, and for the y's, what I've done is split them up so that the first factor here is the largest exponent that's divisible by four, that's less than the exponent that I have here. For the two to the fifth and the x to the fifth, that means I had a two to the fourth, because the four divides nicely by the four. For the y's, I chose y to the eighth, because eight divides nicely by four. In fact, what I'm looking for when I'm doing this, I'm looking for exponents that are multiples of this index, meaning they'll be divisible by that index. What I'm going to do now is apply the product rule to this expression. I'm going to put these three factors that have exponents that are divisible by four in their own radical, and then I'll put the two, the x, and the y squared in a second radical. So here I've separated these three factors that are going to work nicely with the fourth root, and then the other stuff that I had to peel off those factors. My last steps is I'm now going to apply the fourth root to each of these, which means I divide these exponents by four. When I apply the fourth root to each of these, again, I'm dividing their exponents by four. I get two to the one power, x to the one power, and y squared. And then I'm going to leave this alone because I cannot apply the fourth root to any of these factors right here. And I'll just write, rewrite this, the fourth root of x, y squared. This is considered the most simplified version of this radical expression because anything that's left under the radical does not have any factor that I can actually apply the fourth root to. A quick recap for you. First and foremost, radicals are simply the inverse of applying exponents. What that means for variable expressions that if you apply any nth root to a exponential expression, you are going to take that exponent and divide it by the index. It's as simple as that. That is, again, super useful if you can take numbers and turn them into prime factors. Then every factor, you're just dividing exponents by the index. It's as simple as that. The product rule allows us, instead of attacking the entire expression at one time, we can attack each individual factor. That's really important when we have expressions like this, where a few of the factors are, are not divisible, the exponents aren't divisible by the index, what I do is I will split those, part, those factors up into two different factors. One has the largest exponent that's a multiple of my index so that I can divide that exponent by the index. Once I've done that, I have an expression right there here. That's my completely simplified form of this radical expression.